It's Wednesday morning. It's not even 9 a.m. yet, and uh, I am on my second cup of coffee here. I'm not even wearing pants right now. The honest truth is, is that this marketplace that we've been in, the, the Solana NFT market itself, has been so wild the past few days as seemingly everything is going stratospheric. Everything is going through the moon, and it's a great time to be in Solana NFTs. The cool news is we're still super early. Now, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what's been going on with the main blue chips in Solana NFTs. That's, of course, monkeys, apes, birds, and now geckos. But I'm also going to talk about another project in here, one that you've heard me talk about a lot lately, and that's the Red Panda Squad. Now, throughout these sets of videos, what I'm going to talk about is opportunities. There's there's chances here that we could get into this where I think there are potential to make a lot of money. There's you know, the market seems to be overlooking some very important details here, and I'm going to call those out. So that's what's in it for you. Stick around to the end. That way you get the most out of this video and you start to grasp what's really going on with the market and where the opportunities lie. Let's go. So there have already been several new projects minting this week that kind of flew under the radar and just totally uh, either took off or completely imploded. But the blue chips themselves have had a totally wild ride the last few days. And, and really, the blue chips kind of dictate the momentum of the market itself, right? There's You'll see a lot of volatility with new projects, but when a blue chip takes off, that says, wait a minute, somebody sees something big in the market. And we've seen that happen with a few of the blue chips this week. And that's what we're really going to focus in on on this video. I will call out the fact that there there were some new projects that minted, and some of them are going well, some of them aren't. There's also, of course, the Rogue Sharks that are minting on Saturday, this upcoming weekend. That's going to be uh, a big one to watch. We're going to be very interested to see how the market reacts to, you know, what could potentially be a, a high mint price or a low supply or uh, what the secondary markets do. We know it's going to be exclusively listed on Solonart, so I, I'm going to have my eyes peeled on that one big time. But first, let's talk about the main blue chip and the price action that we've seen over the last couple days with the monkeys. Let's go. So one of the best ways to keep your pulse on how a market is doing for a given NFT is to follow the sales bot. If they have a sales bot, that's actually a really, really good thing uh, to keep up with. It's very, especially if you're invested in this project. I myself uh, have two monkeys. I was, uh, to prove that I'm an OG, I minted uh, monkeys way back in the day when they first came out. I minted like six of them and I had no clue what I had. And I ended up selling, you know, pretty much all of them at, at a decent flip. But nonetheless, if I had known what they were going to do, I never would have sold any of them. Anyways, I bought back into the project almost immediately. And now I've held uh, two monkeys ever since. If you follow me, you know about my pirate monkey and uh, how I, I fully intend on selling that to Tom Brady. <laughs> nonetheless. Okay, so the sales bot uh, has been going like it's been going nuts. And you see huge sales. Look, this is this is just like today. 560 on a one at laser monkey. 350 on a looks like a three at zombie. Scrolling on down, 194. 488 alien. 300 uh, here. This this is this is within the past few hours that we're talking about big sales that are going on with the monkeys. Now, why? What what happened here with the monkeys? Somebody, a whale, a lot of people speculate it was Gary Vee, but nobody really knows for sure. A whale came through and bought 50 monkeys a couple days ago and swept the floor all the way up to 250 soul. Or at the time of recording, that was roughly like a 30-something thousand. Yeah, it was like 30-something thousand dollars was the minimum that you could get into a monkey. So the floor was 250 soul. And what happened after that? Well, first of all, Everybody was like, oh my god, like the monkeys are going wild. And at that time, uh, the monkey, the, the market cap put monkeys at something like number six overall of all NFTs. That's comparing to Board Ape Yacht Club. That's comparing to uh, Art Blocks. That's comparing to Cool Cats, Pudgy Penguins, whatever. Monkeys were in the top 10, let alone like closing in on top five or something like that at that time. Huge indicator that Solana NFTs are a big deal, and also a huge indicator 
that the monkeys themselves, at least at that point in time, had solidified themselves as the crypto punks of Solana. They, they were going to be the staple. Now, before I go on any further, I can't stress this enough. I'm just an average Joe off the street. Nothing that I say here should ever be construed as financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a crypto expert. Uh, I'm just a guy having a conversation with my friends. Investing is risky. Investing in NFTs is riskier. And you should always do your own research before buying anything. Now, with that being said, uh, me personally, I feel pretty darn good holding a monkey this early. I know it, you're looking at it right now and going like, well, the floor uh, is 170. It's it's clearly dropped quite a bit from the 250 mark, but 170 is still pretty expensive. If if Soul is something like $150, 150 fiat for uh, one Soul, and these are selling for 170, what does that put that at? It's closing in again on like right around a $30,000 mark just to get into the monkeys. Well, somebody tweeted me recently and said, ask me how I feel selling my CryptoPunk for 34000 And it's like, ooh, ouch, okay. So if you could have bought a CryptoPunk at 34000 you'd be sitting on potentially millions right now. Well, look at these monkeys. Right around 30000 right? Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe for me, personally, I think it's a good idea just to have a monkey and, and hold that monkey and love that monkey for a little while, for just a few more months, maybe a year. That maybe go for long-term capital gains tax. That way you don't have to pay short-term capital gains tax on millions of dollars. Anyways, uh, so the whale swept the floor up to 250, and a lot of these paper-handed people saw this and went, hmm, that whale must not know anything. I'm going to dump the floor all the way back down to 170. Now, somebody tweeted me and said, you're shaming them. And you're like, yeah, I'm shaming them. This is the hottest NFT in Solana that uh, is, is like just going. It's now number five or number six in market cap, and people are dumping the floor after a whale uh, comes through and sees some potential. They see something special in this market and say, I'm going to just throw millions of dollars into this project because I believe that that's going to make me millions more later down the road. And a lot of people were like, nah, <laughs> well, I don't know. Seems like a missed opportunity to me. But again, not financial advice. Do your own research. Do what's best for you and your family. If it's best for your family right now to cash out 30000 bucks, I get it, I guess. But uh, imagine if you just hold on till Christmas. I don't know. So uh, that's what's going on with the monkeys. They've had a huge swing up followed by a huge swing down. Now, an interesting thing that has occurred is most monkey holders also happen to hold Thugbirds. And the price action with Thugbirds followed almost identically suit here. It was a, it was a delay, probably about a 24-hour delay. Uh, but the Thugbird floor has now been moved. Let me change colors here so I can actually draw on this. The, the price action here has now been moved uh, up to 55 sold. I personally, on my Twitter account, have given away three Thugbirds for free, for completely free. I've given two away in just a raw giveaway, and then I gave one away to a friend. Now, at the time, those Thugbirds, uh, they might have cost me like nine soul or ten soul or something like that. But when I gave it away to my friend, the floor was 11 soul. Now I'm looking at it and saying, I've given away uh, at least 165 soul worth of Thugbirds at this time, which puts it right around 30,000 bucks that I just gave away. So, <laughs> you know, uh, you live, you learn, but I hope you guys are really happy with those giveaways. Um, and, and I hope it's changing your life in a really positive and beneficial way, because that's really what the goal was for me here. So, Immediately, I'm like, oh, look at that. Red red glasses right there for 63 soul or spotted right there for 70 soul. This is somebody who's trying to exit the market uh, because they do have something special. So the Thugbirds are going absolutely crazy. And when you're looking through Thugbirds, like I just did right there, you're looking for specialized attributes that are clearly below the floor. And you can find the floor by just clicking on the advanced filter and saying like, ah, what's the zombie look like? Well, okay, the zombie floor is 104, and it looks like there's five zombies away to get it to 250. If they sell these five zombies, the price will more than double on the floor of, of the zombies. The same thing goes for, let's do the drop down and do aliens here. Okay, so the aliens are the, look at this i mean you're you're like 175 right now you're four or five away from getting it up to 325 soul 
for the floor of the aliens. And, and like that 325 soul alien is not even special. It has like no extra attributes. There's no earring. There's no chain. There's no teardrop tattoo. There's no hat. Uh, so, uh, you know, you want to pick out basically what go by advanced features and just pick out an attribute. Any attribute. This could be something like background color. This could be something like if there's a chain. This could be something like are they smoking? Uh, what color is their earring? Do they have a teardrop tattoo? That's how you want to go, like, finding the deals on Thug Birds. You want to find out, like, uh, what's the floor right now and how long is it going to take us to, like, evaporate the floor and make a huge jump. It seems like zombies and aliens both uh, are... This, if somebody sweeps those zombies, like, just two or three of them, look at what's going to happen. So that's that's the potential win there and know that what happens with the monkeys is is seemingly very correlated to what's happening with the thug birds i think that's you know if, if monkeys go off then the the thug birds go off too not necessarily the reverse direction though so uh the other thing of course is supply constraints there's only 3,333 thug birds so that's a pretty interesting factor to keep in mind and how many are listed right now uh you know not a whole lot okay so DGen apes. Now the DGen apes have had just a total roller coaster of a ride because the market themselves were kind of down on the apes. I feel like uh, after their little spat with Austin over at Audius, we saw a lot of people go, "Ah, this this isn't cool." And then they've got this like internal vote about how the exiled apes are going to be handled and. Uh, their community is, for the most part, pretty united in how it wants to handle those things, but there are a few people uh, who feel strongly about the opposite about how it should be handled. So there's been a lot of people who are trying to exit the apes, while most people feel very bullish about the apes overall. What you also are seeing, especially on Twitter, is a lot of Ethereum people are now moving into Solana and the thing that's catching their eye, the things that they're buying, the things that you see being tweeted right now is that they're buying DGN apes. The Ethereum people, I, I can't stress this enough, people who hold bored apes are moving into Solana, and the thing that's getting them to do it is DGN apes. Focus on that for a bit. Focus on the psychology of that for a second. Why? The 3D art is cool. They have some unique, oh, look at this right here. You see it in the money mouth right there? For 71, that's a steal. Um, oh, and it's got a merch, merch app. Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, so the thing about it is, is this is what's catching people's eyes. And when the FTX marketplace launches, which they said in an interview, they were around a month away from doing that. That was sometime like last week. So maybe by Halloween, maybe speculating based on what Brett said in an interview to Bloomberg is that the marketplace for FTX could be launched uh, within a month. And what happens then? Millions of people all of a sudden see an NFT link. FTX loves Solana, so I would feel pretty strongly they're going to so support and promote Solana NFTs. They click on it. What is the thing that's going to probably catch their eye? Probably going to be apes and sharks. Just going to speculate that right now uh, because the 3D artwork is really, really cool. And if they've heard of bored apes, then they know that apes are a big deal. And I think DGen apes, when FTX launches, are really going to take off. We'll, we'll see, especially if they can get, you know, someone like Tom Brady to wear, you know, the helmet ape or something like that and get a custom one. And then, uh, then it just goes absolutely wildfire. So the apes, they had a huge dip. We saw their floor go down, 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 down. It was something like way down below uh, their all-time high. And now within like the last 24 to 48 hours, they're rebounding back. Oh, look at this guy right here. Double merch. He's got the hoodie and the hat. Um, so <laughs> you see how I just like I browse and I immediately gravitate towards things. Uh, and it looks like this guy's paper handing it too. They're going to sell it for a half a soul loss. Not going to make it. Um, so this is what, what we're, we're seeing. We're seeing that the price for DJ and Apes dipped down, but they're starting to come back. They have formed a student council, which is forming a DAO with two O's is what they spell it. Uh, we don't really know what that's going to have in store. We don't really know what they're, they're going to do. But they're, they seem to be very resolute on building some type of metaverse, some type of story, uh, some type of community. It, like There's a lot of chat right now in their Discord about how things are turning the corner uh, and how the apes are going to come back stronger than ever. They have full intentions of being the number one NFT uh, on Solana and... 
while the momentum right now is in the hands of the monkeys. The monkeys are, are clearly the dominant force right now. Uh, I do believe that the apes could have a chance of doing that when the FTX market launch marketplace launches. They can reach a wider audience, and they have the artwork that's really going to catch eyes. So, um, as long as the community uh, doesn't continue to be, you know, what what it's been, where it's kind of like a lot of infight. I don't know. I want to say a lot of infighting because everybody seems pretty unique. But there are a couple, you know, voices out there that have been more or less, you know, a little combative. I think is the right word. I think once they turn that around, uh, then they're going to do, uh, I think, really, really huge things. And I'm very bullish on the DJ Apes overall. So uh, they've also done some amazing things recently. They did that charity auction, which was amazing. I think that's awesome for uh, the Apes to be reaching back. They've always been very charitable. Like, they don't get enough credit for that because they have done great things. They've done amazing things and also developing the Solana NFT ecosystem. This DAO that they're building is going to have on-chain governance tokens, like the first of its kind. Uh, so they're being very innovative behind the scenes, and nobody's really talking about it when I think they should be. And all signs are pointing, are pointing towards apes could really take off in the next few days or weeks. Okay, geckos. I know you've been wanting to hear me talk about the geckos because I am obsessed with the geckos. I, I think they're just the best project <laughs> like on Solana because they're just so like in-depth in the lore and building a story. They've been tweeting lately about all of these different pieces. Like if you've got an augmented mouth, uh, they give you a story about how you got an augmented mouth. And it was like being the last racer to survive a race or something like that. You were rewarded with the augmented. Cool stuff like that that makes you like feel like it's more than just artwork. And it just the things that made me so bullish about the geckos continues to be so bullish. Now, where's the opportunity with the geckos? Where can you make money? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, let me go back to Solon Art right now and I'm going to show you. Consider for a moment. Let me find it. Let me, where, where'd you go, geckos? Come on. Uh, top collections. Nope, 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 nope. There you are. Geckos. Okay. So we know that the neon green geckos, I'm going to write it over here. I'm just going to write neon. The neon green geckos have a supply of 333. Next up is white with a supply of something like 355. And next up is black with a supply of, I think it was 353, but I'll double check all these numbers later. Okay, so let's look at the price action of these and see if there's anything that really stands out. So when I look at neon and white, uh, there's only 12, <laughs> there's only 12 separating the number of neons and whites. So no matter how you look at it, out of a 10K mint, they are all three here, neon, white, and black, extraordinarily scarce. We're talking like 0.3% uh, of the total supply. So when I click on, if I just filter out neon greens, um, I see the neon green floor right now is 137. Like three of these get swept. It's up to 150. Uh, uh, three more get swept. It's up to 165. And then it gets really thin after that. Then we almost immediately start jumping up into the 200s. Uh, the 200s could just get evaporated so quick. And then we're in the 300. Look at that. Neon green with a nebular uh, armor. That's that's pretty solid. Anyways, uh, so the neon green floor right now is 137. But that guy sells. And it's up into the 140s, right? So you would think, okay, they're very, very scarce. They've got a good floor, 137. That's very healthy. These are, Pintoshi said, these are effectively the alien crypto punks of Solana. So uh, hard to disagree with that right now. So then when I think, okay, well, the whites should be neck and neck with that because the they are just as scarce, right? I give it a click. The floor is 60, less than half. The floor is less than half of what it is for neons when there's only 12 separating them. Uh, it, to me, this is interesting that the mythic trait uh, is so um, valued less than the ultra trait in this case. I, I don't think that that's necessarily, I don't think that's going to play out in the benefit long. I mean, I think the ultras will always be valued more and maybe substantially more. But to me, there's just seems to be this huge disparity. It feels like all three of these should have similar prices, not necessarily neck and neck prices, but similar. Like I would look at the whites, like if neons right now are 137, 
to 145 is kind of their floor range, then I would expect whites to be something like 95 to 120. And I would expect, you know, the blacks to be pretty much like neck and neck with the white right here. That sounds super racist, doesn't it? I, I don't like that. That's not cool. I, I wish I could come up with a better way to say these. The the pale lizards versus, I don't know, this is not good. Uh, I'm not a racist. I don't like that stuff. Uh, so, so the black lizards here, I think they should be, you know, maybe like, you know, nine, maybe 85 to 115, something like they should be all kind of grouped together. Uh, but they're not. The, the white geckos right now are significantly lower than I think where they should be. Now, if we take a look at the spectral black, let's click on that. 65. I mean, we're, we're kind of in the same boat here again. Let me bring my, my writing back here on the screen. So I, I think there's a huge discrepancy right now between where neon is and where the other very scarce geckos are. So this is how I would play that one. I, I think I would start trying to attack the items that are still pretty scarce in general. You may be thinking to yourself, where can you find out uh, whether something is scarce or not? If you go to nfteyes.global, uh, bring up your wallet address, press enter. It takes a second to load, but then it finally loads. Let me scroll on down past the pandas, which I'm about to talk about. Let's bring up, say, uh, the neon green guy right here. So do you see this right here? It's kind of dark and hard to see, but you see... Here's body, neon green, count 333. This tells me that there are 333 neon greens. Eyes, ionic disruptors. 234 uh, ionic disruptors are in existence. Mouth, pensive, lots of mouths. Uh, attribute count, right there. 1,066, four ats are in existence. Give her, you remember my, my previous video on the geckos about why I was arguing that this one in particular is going to be pretty rare? It's because there are only 333 neons in general. There are only 234 ionic disruptors in general, and there are only 1,066 four ats in general. The fact that this combination of all of those came together, to me, says this should be a pretty scarce uh, gecko in existence. And you know, potentially sell for millions of dollars someday. I really believe that it will. Uh, so nonetheless, this is how you could go about finding out the attribute counts. And what you want to do is you probably want to pick out, you want to pick on one particular attribute. Take a look at what is the ultra mouthpiece. That's going to be the augmented. And then take a look at the mythic mouthpiece. Find out how big of a difference their scarcity is by looking at the metadata for each one of these, if you have the access to do that, and then see if the price floor matches up in your opinion. You know, this is going to be something, again, you're going to have to do your own research, and none of this is not his financial advice. It's not financial advice whatsoever, uh, so don't take it that way, but this is where I see market inefficiencies uh, that I think over time will start to level out because right now we're just, we're still in the super early days. At the time of this recording, the geckos are almost one week old and that'll be like five o'clock this afternoon they'll be one week old but they're not yet they're not even a week old so we're still starting to see people like trying to get in and get out and blah, 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 take profits or whatever uh, but but the diamond hands are now starting to pile in uh, and you're starting to see them kind of shake everything out and the prices eventually will you know regulate each other and, and make more sense but right now there's inefficiencies and there's profits to be made from doing that okay so that's the four blue chips now where's the big uh, opportunity that's going on now I, I you know i was going to bring this up and it's going to be the red panda squad so why do i think the red panda squad is going to be uh, such a big deal i actually just made a huge thread on this on twitter and i'm going to highlight some of the thread that i made on twitter if you're not following me on twitter you know feel free to do that so I made this huge thread on Twitter about why I think this is going to be such a big deal. And let me go back here. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, here's the thread. Let, I got to go all the way down to the start of the thread, I guess. Okay, so why do I think the red pandas are a big deal? First and most importantly, like I said with the geckos, when you launch a project, you have this very, very like finicky first few hours to hook people into the community and keep them there. And one of the ways that you do that is stick to your roadmap. They have stuck to their roadmap. They've already made the donations and they've proven it by bringing up, you see this tweet right here, uh, they've made their $25,000 donation. Here's the uh, ETH scan donation. They had to, uh, I guess, make this donation in Ether. Uh, nonetheless, 
They are absolutely doing this. You know, keep in mind here, they minted 10,000 red pandas. That's more red pandas than exist on planet Earth today. So doing Wildlife Foundation is actually very important to them. I think it's a very noble mission to keep in mind. Uh, and they, they, they are sticking to the plan. They are not abandoning ship. They are, in fact, doubling down and going in, going forward with the roadmap and building this whole community. That being said, I know a lot of people, like, they, they, they gauge the health of a project by the floor. And if, if you've been in projects or NFTs long enough, you know that that's not the right thing to do. <laughs> you know that. Because you, you've, you're in the Discord and they say, like, we're going to make a, like, dedicated channel to actual holders so that you'll stop talking about the floor and price action because it's more important to build the community and start talking about why you like your stuff. So when I click on red pandas here, uh, we see that the price action of the floor is 1.59 right now, which is less than the mint price of 2.5. But, and I can't stress this enough, that's not a dump. Being down less than one soul for mint is not a dump by any stretch of the means. That's actually a pretty good sign, the fact that they're not at like 0 0.1, right? They minted on Friday, they minted 10k, listen to this. Listen to how important this is. They minted 10K at two and a half soul, which isn't necessarily a cheap mint, right? That's kind of, that's higher than the geckos. And uh, that was after they had decided to lower the price from 2.8 soul too. They minted 10K at two and a half soul in 11 minutes. All 10,000 sold out in 11 minutes. That means there's community. That means there's hype. That means that people believe in this project. So why are we seeing a little bit of a dip in the floor price action in the days that led after it? This is what happens with most NFT projects. We, it was an anomaly that it didn't happen uh, with the geckos. It's, it's a, a little bit of an anomaly that it's not happening with the one that minted last night, Infinity something that was the cool landscapes. Really, really cool project. Love the artwork. I didn't mint it. I don't hold any right now, uh, but it's something that I've got my eyes on. I think it's a really cool concept that they've got going on. Um, but the rest of these projects, they mint and they dip. That's just what happens. And then what happens, like we talked about this in the last video. If I've got uh, a chart here where this is price and this is time, and this is the mint price, this dotted line, you see the secondary prices do this, and then they come back up because what happens is people mint a lot. They mint like dozens of pandas if they want to or whatever project they would have meant. And then they get all of these commons and they just want to get rid of their commons. They just want to hold the rares and try and flip the rare for a bigger price. So they dump the commons to try and recoup some of the capital that they use so they can mint the next project. Or they can keep minting this project and a chance to go for rare. That's what's happening right now. It's not that people don't like the project and want to bail out. It's quite the opposite. People love the project, uh, but we just have a people, a bunch of people who are sitting on commons and they want to shake up the commons. I am bullish on this because the commons still look good. The artwork is really, really cool. The attributes are really, really cool. The fur colors are cool. The eye designs, the facial expressions, the headgear, uh, all of these are really, really cool. The pandas are super cute. They're super cuddly, but they can also be super fierce. And they also have a lot of really cool attributes. If I jump back to my NFT eyes, where'd that page go? I started stockpiling Saiyans. I really like this Saiyan attribute. It's a rare attribute. 0.9% of the, oh, where'd it go? Where'd they go? Oh, it failed to load. While this is trying to reload again, because NFT eyes does this to me every now and then, uh, the Saiyan attribute, 0.9% of the total supply are Saiyans. That means uh, out of 10,000, 91 are Saiyans. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. If you can add some even more, attributes to it and then you got even uh, a more rare saiyan available to you which i think is really really cool okay so it looks like nft eyes isn't going to work i'm going to pull up mine uh by going back to solonart and then going to my wallet uh there's my geckos okay look at this i've got my saiyan i've got my plain gold panda here i've got my cyborg panda and then i've got a bunch more saiyans and then a cool uh skeleton guy i got all of these you know over the last 24 hours for what i feel like was theft because these are top ranking pandas. I basically swept the ceiling this morning 
uh, grabbing stuff out of the top 200. This guy right here, this is rank number 37. Uh, when I scroll up, I think this guy right here is rank number 34. And I got these for like 22 salt. And it's not because that's cheap or whatever. It's, it's because uh, I, I'm super bullish on this project because they're delivering on all of their promises. They've got cool artwork. Uh, the community that's in the pandas knows that these guys are going to go the distance. And very importantly, they have a lot of things in the works right now that are very, very promising. They have partnerships with major DeFi platforms and funding already. That's with Marinade Finance and that's with Parrot Finance. Hopefully, if, if you're in the DeFi world and Solana, uh, you know what those are. But if not, I'll probably make a video on DeFi here before long and show you how you can get extra yield out of your soul uh, when you use Solana. But I'll also bring up their website. When I scroll on down, we see that the roadmap has some really, really awesome stuff. They've got merch. They've got street art where the person, the, the artist company, has already been arranged. Uh, they're building out private websites, private uh merchandise for the holders they're building out real life events dj uh, live sets celebrity influencers partnerships uh, and one one of one nfts with the top blue chips in the environment they're building out a dow the private website uh, i mean did i mention the merch I, i'm a big fan of the merch because this is guerrilla marketing this is how you get the word out people love their cool fierce unique cute pandas they want to put it on a sweater uh, and i do I absolutely will buy this stuff. I uh, I love merch for any project. I'm dying for the Degen Apes uh, to make their hats in the red the red hoodie. I want that bad. Um, and I also want this from the pandas because I like my panda. I, I want to put my panda on my sweater because <laughs> uh, I like them. And, and, and uh, this is just cool stuff to me. The fact that they're building like an, a, a culture around the red panda squad and they're they're pressing forward full steam ahead even after you know collecting roughly three four million dollars on friday they, they aren't slowing down you can jump in their discord right now and chat with them you can dm them on twitter uh, and chat with them you may have some time zone differences i think they're in the eu but nonetheless like you, you can get in touch with them because they're still available and they're still working like crazy on this project and i think we're just waiting for the paper hands to shake out on these comments which are still really cool the comments are are really really cute and and really uh, awesome and some of them are really really fierce i really like what they have going i like my little gold common here my my gold common boy i like my 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 fierce face sombrero panda here. i like this stuff i think that this is really really cool and it's unique artwork uh that's at least unique to solana we we haven't seen high quality projects that are really like invested in building an ecosystem in solana uh in a while i i, I think i'm really really bullish on that type of stuff now one last thing that i want to point out why i'm so bullish on uh, the pandas. Let me go back to Solonart and let me go to collections. Look at this. If I scroll up to the top right here, the red panda squad is within uh, 500 soul of overtaking Aurori for being the number five spot. But we also know there's been quite a bit of drama going on with Eternal Beings because Lil Uzi Vert basically was like a big promoter of this project. They minted, and then he absolutely disappeared from the scene, uh, deleting all his tweets. You know, a lot of people are calling it a rug. Their Discord is saying he's still on board. He's still very involved. We don't really know what's going on with them. Uh, it's cool artwork. I like the artwork, but the project is very much in flux right now, so I'm going to sit on the sidelines. So uh, I don't see, I, I see Red Pandas potentially overtaking Aurori, and I see Eternal Beings falling out of sight. That would put Red Pandas right here in the number four spot. So we would see Geckos, Infinity Labs, which just minted last night, was very hot because of how cool the artwork is. We'll see what they do over time. Then DGen Apes, and then Red Panda Squad. Being number four in volume on Solonart is not a small accomplishment people are interested in this project i think this is actually indicative of the paper handshaking out or more importantly people like me who want to come in and buy the high value rares right now because that's what happens when you talk about how market cycles work within nfts that's what happens first people come in right after the project mints in the following days and try and grab up as many of the rares for a good deal as they possibly can 
and talk about how much they like this project. Then that kind of filters down to the lower tiers until it happens with the floor. And then the cycle starts all over again. The floor starts elevating and then people start uh, flipping for profits and trying to get into the higher tier NFTs, the, the rare ones. Uh, and that's just how it goes. So I think this is literally what we're witnessing right now is people are uh, shaking out the, the rares and the, the middle tier ones and then the floor action is going to follow almost immediately. So sure, some NFTs go through that cycle quicker than others, like the Galactic Gecko Space Garage. Y'all, the Thugbirds didn't like just launch to a huge like following and a massive thing. They had to build it. It took months uh, to, to get to where they are today. And I, I mean, I remember I minted monkeys. I minted DJ Apes. I saw Thugbirds. I was like, meh. And then after a month or two, the community adopted the Thugbirds and I got massive FOMO. And I was like, oh, they're like, this is actually really cool. Once I actually learned how the attributes work and how to pick out a good one, now I'm into it and I'll go buy myself some Thugbirds, right? The, I, the, this is just the cycle that it goes through. So I, so many people are like quick to look at a project and be like, like within the first 24 hours, they call the project dead. Are you kidding me right now? Like if that was the case, then like CryptoPunks would have died. Board Ape Yacht Club would have died. These things, the chart looks like this, you guys. It goes like that. It takes time to build that ramp up, and then it goes parabolic. Only the geckos did this. That doesn't happen in the real world, though. So don't let that dopamine rush that you got from the geckos cloud your mind as to what all of the other projects really do in the real world. I actually think seeing Red Pandas about to be number five and potentially number four in Solar Art on day five of its existence as an extremely bullish signal. So how did I go about sniping the very rare ones for a really good price. Uh, I use the tool How Rare Is. If you go to howrare.is, scroll all the way down, you see Red Panda Squad. The easiest way that you can just find out like what they're ranked for and uh, what they're selling for, just scroll down and you see this price min, price max. Set your max price. Set your max price to something, I don't know, 20. Press enter and look right there. This tells me right now, rank 49 is listed for 14 soul. Oh man, I may, I may need to buy that. Huh. Rank 54, 20 soul. Rank 57, 17 soul. Rank 82, 20 soul. Rank 87, 15 soul. Rank 95, 15.9 soul. These are top 1% pandas. Top 1%. They're in the top 100 uh, that you can scrape up right now for Look, I mean, top half percent panda, you can show, I better buy that for 14 soul. Uh, I think this is just a clear way uh, to grab the ones that you want. Or, or if you want to say like, okay, I, I like all these, but I really wanted to buy up some Saiyans. So let's choose my headpiece and choose Super Saiyan, resubmit. Now I see all of my top ranked Saiyans sorted by rank and what their prices are. See that? Now, some of this is out of date. Like, I, I just bought this guy. I'm pretty sure I bought some more of these here. So, <laughs> some of this is a little out of date. But nonetheless, like, this is how you can go about doing it. If you want to jump straight to the link, let's click on Red Panda 6005. There's a buy button right here. You give it a click, it takes you straight into the Solon Art listing so that you can buy it. So, this is how I scraped up the really good deals. If you just want to see, like, what's the best panda that I can get for, like, five soul, you just come here. Let me wipe out my filter real quick and just set the price max to five soul. And boom, right there. Rank five. Man, I should buy that, too. Rank 527, a roughly top 5% panda, is for sale right now for 4.9 soul. Do you see how there's some real deals to be here. If you believe that this project is about to take off the way I believe this project is about to take off, there's humongous opportunities for you in this project right now uh, to get some top ranking red pandas. We'll see what the market does. Not financial advice. Do your own research. The market 
does what the market does. But nonetheless, this is why I feel strongly that there's some real opportunities here. The market cycle for the red pandas is just moving slower than these like ultra hot things that are dropping right now, like geckos and, geckos and infinity labs. But also keep in mind the FTX marketplace is going to launch and the most visually appealing NFTs are probably the ones that are going to do well. They're going to see a pop on top of the ones that everybody knows is a blue chip, like the Solana monkeys or the DJ apes. So uh, I think these are visually appealing projects. I think this is a great project. So this is my take on what's going on with the Solana NFT marketplace. If you have an opinion, if you have a suggestion, if you want to hear me talk about something, hit the comments below. Also, don't forget to click that like or subscribe button. The subscribe button is free to click. It's free for you to click that, and it won't bother you with push notifications unless you click that little bell, at which point you'll be notified whenever new content gets released. Now, I will say this. For a new... Uh, YouTube channel for this getting started, clicking that subscribe button really means the world to me. This is what tells YouTube that you think I'm doing a good job. So uh, do me a favor and give that button a click. It would it would really help a lot. Also follow me on Twitter and let me know uh, if you ever want to get in touch with me, DMing me on Twitter is one of the best ways to do it. My DMs are open. All right. Thanks for stopping by y'all. See you in the next one.